Hi, this is Dr. Scott Young, and today we're going to do the, the seventh of the series. It's the Tribulation Series Groups. So this one is the GOAT. It's a really interesting one. Coming right up. Okay, I must be a sick puppy because I kind of like this one only because of the theology and the other stuff that you guys can learn. But the goats are actually false teachers. There is a lot of misinformation around the goats and you got to see where it actually comes from. And and we'll, we'll fully flush these guys out with that too. Maybe out the airlock as well. So, all right, so let me show you. Um, again, we want to go through the tribulation. I love doing this for you because I know some people go, I still don't get it. That's why I want to do it for you. Okay. Beginning of the tribulation, middle, the very end, Rosh Hashanah, or Yom Kippur. Okay. Rosh Hashanah is the, uh, the part where Jesus is in the clouds, is visible to everyone. Revelation 14, 14. Uh, we have, uh, uh, <clears throat> so many references, including like, I think it's Philippians 4.11. But basically, that's the one where he's seen by everyone. You know, you can deny the, the God of the universe all the way through here, but you will not deny him here. Okay. So the beginning of the tribulation, before the tribulation even starts, we have the pre-tribulation rapture of the bride, which are the faithful. that We will bring them up. A couple times in here which is you right and we have the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war again that's in the hope in the last day series you can watch it in the second of the hope in the last day series okay I hope I said that right hope okay and <clears throat> the tribulation and there's a couple there's a couple people out there like you know, we started the tribulation in 2017 and now we're 2024, so we're coming toward the end of it. I'm going, where is the Antichrist? It's a man, it's not a system, it's not a group. Where is he? Tell me where he is. Fulfill scripture all the way through and through. And you're going, oh, he's, I got it. He's, he's Obama. No, 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 he's already dead. Sorry. You don't get that one. Uh, this is introduced by Jesus, okay? The Christ introduces the Antichrist. There's economic chaos up through that time frame, partly because we got as many, if you want to come up with a number, but maybe 700 million um, believers in Christ. I mean, pick the number you want, you feel more comfortable with, but if there's 8 billion people on the planet, 700 million people go, that's 7 times the number who died in World War One and World War Two, and they're going to be gone like that. Trust me, economic chaos is going to go off the charts. In the second half, the mark of the beast is required. Now, it'll be voluntary here, but maybe mandatory slash legal, which would be, you know, a law with that too. Fascinating stuff. Okay. And I always say, you think you can live through, and I had two or three people like, oh, we're going to live through the tribulation. I'm like, you have no idea. Almost no one's going to make it. Revelation, or sorry, Matthew 24. I want to say it's verse 11. I could be wrong on that. It could be verse 33. It basically says, if the days were not shortened, no flesh would survive. You will not make it through that time frame. I could prove it a hundred different ways. And if you need more information, watch the called, the called that in this particular group. Now, the seven seals move from <coughs> the beginning to the very end. Sorry, allergies are horrible out here. My cough is good, just allergies, okay? So seven seals go all the way through. The seven trumpets start in the middle, go to the end, and the seven bowls hit here. And this is one of the more powerful teachings when you really understand that. Okay. Again, the 144,000 are young Jewish men who've never had sex with a woman. They are sealed of God and they cannot be killed. Fascinating point. 
they become believers in that first ish time frame. Okay, I'm not telling you the exact moment. Um, it's not like I'm not. I'm trying to keep it away from you. It's just no one knows. Okay. Then we move, and they will bring in who I call the Ecletos or the elect. We would call them the chosen, and they are the guests at the wedding feast, and they go up and become part. When you are up in heaven, they fulfill the guest at the wedding, Matthew 22, 1 through 13. In the second part of the time frame, we have the called. Those are the kaleo. They're called for a purpose. What would be their purpose? Big portion of their purpose is to be the martyrs of God. These are preppers. And actually, that's what it says. Revelation, or sorry, Luke 12, 48. And I have to like always dredge these up when I'm, I'm looking, thinking about it here. But Luke 12, 48 says that they will, um, they don't know you <clears throat> or they know you, his will. They don't do, they also don't prepare and have severe persecution. Severe persecution means martyrdom. They learn about Jesus through the angel. There's one angel that bounces all the way through the earth. It's fascinating. Just one guy. We don't have his name. Okay. Uh, so we want to pick Clarence. That's fine with me. The two witnesses are the two witnesses that um, are also in that time frame. And I, I, thought, I thought that in the tribulation series as well. These are the two people that are, I mean, these are the people, three, three group, I mean, three guys or whatever that are out there and they're preaching to the world. Now, Dr. Jeff actually has a real interesting statement that the two witnesses actually announce each one of the trumpets. So the angels are doing it, but they announce it to the world. They would also possibly announce the bulls. Now, the two witnesses will die at this time frame. And they, they lay on the streets for three and a half days and they're taken up. The called actually go up in Rosh Hashanah in the last final rapture. Those three rapture points. Okay. Now we haven't even talked about the goats. It's one of the weirder ones out there. But let's pop over into analogies of goats. Now use this picture. It's a powerful picture of that. Um, Satanist love the goat. And there's a reason for that. So you got to see this, this kind of thing. Okay. Analogy number one, the foolish virgins. This is in Matthew 25. It's um, one through 13. Now I want you to kind of catch biblical order. Matthew 23, you know, they're hanging out in Jerusalem. And Jesus then walks up, they walk up to the, um, to the temple and they're outside the temple and the, and the disciples go, Hey, look how cool the temple is. I'm going to pull this off here just so you can kind of watch me for a second. <clears throat> look how cool the temple is. And will, when, <clears throat> when will be that time where you walk in and do everything? They're basically saying the second coming, but they don't know what that means because they think he's doing it right then. And he goes, nah, you don't get it. Um, the temple won't even be here, 70 AD. That's what he's talking about when he says that. And then he goes through a whole bunch of different things. Now, some people think that's the whole part of the tribulation. Man, that has got some information, but doesn't have as much as you think is in there. Now, Jesus then, <clears throat> because he lets Paul talk about it more, Jesus then moves into Matthew 25. Now, if you pull Matthew 25 and you try to preach on it by itself, you won't get the order. He's just been talking about end times. Matthew 25, the foolish and the wise virgins are the powerful point that we need to understand as this is an end time conversation. So you have two different types of people. You have a foolish and you have a wise virgin. A virgin means someone who is waiting for her groom. Did you catch what I'm saying there? Who's waiting for the groom? 
the bride. Because when she gets when she gets engaged, in essence, there's a there he you know the the groom gives the dowry to the dad to purchase purchase her away from the family. It's not a slavery kind of issue. It is a repurposing. It's like she has got a contract with the dad or like a contract in the Russian KHL for a hockey player and he's under contract and the NHL might want to go ahead. We want to buy out that contract so you can come play with us. That's what that means. In essence, it's also a type of rapture. It's a type of harpezo. You, you repurpose that person. That's what harpezo means. It means to be caught away. And, you, and when Jesus says he buys, you are bought with a price, that's the dowry, the wedding dowry. He's not talking in the way that you might think of. He's talking wedding conversations. Okay, so what does the, the, the virgins, what do the virgins have, okay? So they have a lamp, they have a wick in their lamp, and they should have oil, but one of them doesn't have oil in their lamp. So the 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 virgin, the first, I mean the the wise virgin has a lamp, she has oil, and she has um, her wick. Now let's talk about those first three for a second. The oil is the Holy Spirit. The lamp is her new body. This is also kind of talked about as the new wineskin. You don't put old wine or new wine into an old wineskin. You have a new wineskin. That means you have to have a new um, spirit in you. That's really a spirit conversation. So it holds the, I mean, the, the oil and the, and the, the concept of the, of the wine is all Holy Spirit. Okay. So, this foolish virgin, or so the wise virgin, first off, the one that has the three, the wise virgin, she falls asleep because it's a long time. Now, most people didn't realize it in biblical time frames. Even Paul didn't get this. He was like, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna be around. There is a process of, of, of immediacy that they feel, but it doesn't mean immediacy is like next day. It's kind of like, um, the truthers that are looking forward in the constitutional nature of Nasara and saying, when does the EBS occur? And again, you don't know the, the date. Oh, sounds very familiar, isn't it? <clears throat> because it's a powerful moment that no one's going to know it. Only the Father in heaven tells the Son it's time to do this. That's why he says in Matthew 24, only the day... The, you know, no one knows the day or hour except for the father. That means he's talking about the father is the one that releases him. But that is, again, that is an analogy of the picture of the time frame. Again, wedding stuff. So when you read Matthew 25, you got to see it as a wedding conversation. And if you don't get it, if you don't read it that way, you will not understand the Jewish tradition of it. Okay, so this foolish, or the, excuse me, the wise virgin, she's got oil in her lamp. She, I'm, I'm going to, not so I, I flip you off here, okay? And she, she has a wick and she has the lamp. So she wakes up because it's time. She hears a trumpet blast. And we'll talk about the, who does the trumpet blast. But basically, that's the, the groom coming in to get married. It's the concept of the taking away of the bride into her new life. Oh, guys, it's so amazing. Then she turns on the wick, you know, lights up the, the, this oil because what happens, that lamp is supposed to be lit all the time. Now, she really let it go out. So it's kind of a warning. Hey, guys, don't let your lamp go out. That's the seven churches. They talk about that in Revelation 1 through 3. I mean, up to 4. And it talks about the seven different churches. And it says, men, 
don't let your lampstand go out. I mean, it's a really a, a, your lamp go out in essence. Now, what she does is she lights her lamp. And that meant that is like the engagement ring. That tells the other young bucks, you can't date her, okay? She is set aside for her groom. Okay, so she lights the lamp and her job is then to go to the, to the wedding. She doesn't just stay here. See, the groom doesn't come, he comes back and he takes her away. <gasps> That's the pre-tribulation rapture. He's taking her her away oh my gosh do you catch it your job as the bride is to fulfill jesus who's the prince of peace but to become the king of kings in the planetary things he already is from time immemorial but he always has to do something in time frame just like he lived and he died he gave up his life in a time frame on the planet so when Jesus is accomplishing that particular job, the next job is to be married. And when you're married, you are ready to be the king, which is the king of kings. Oh, man, when you see it, it's so cool. Okay, so this is the setup. Now, on the other side, we have the foolish virgins. They both have a lamp and they have a wick but they got no oil in their, their lamp. And you're going, what in the heck is going on with that? And so then they asked the foolish, the five fool, wise virgins go, can't you give me some of your oil? And I remember the first time a couple times I read it, I was like, yeah, why can't they? They go, go to the city and buy it. It's because you cannot get the Holy Spirit from another person. Let's say you and your best friend, Susan, making up a name, Okay, and you see the Holy Spirit on her. You've always seen it in her life. I mean, she's just unbelievably like, oh, she's on fire, right? And you go, I want to get it from her. And the answer is, you can't get it from Susan. You can only get it from, the, from Jesus. Your spirit is seated in heavenly places, uh, Hebrews 9, 9.27. You cannot get that connection and the filling of the Holy Spirit without the word and without that connection that you have with God. And with that Holy Spirit that comes in you is the comforter. It's what gets you through the cruddy times. But these foolish, foolish virgins have drained out their Holy Spirit. They don't have have them anymore. It means that they don't believe in the Bible. Oh, baby, when you catch this one, it'll mess you up. And then they go to outer darkness. Now, we will talk about that one in a little bit. Okay, we'll come back to that one. Next one. Oops, sorry. The unfaithful servant with the talents. Do you notice we're in Matthew 25? And then boom, he jumps into another one. They're all involved with this. So we got the bride and the goats are there. And you'll see the goats. Those are the foolish virgins. Now, let's do another one. And I know I'm, I'm taking a lot of time with this, but I think it's fun. So we're, now we have the foolish, or sorry, the parable of the talents. So one guy gets five. He makes five more and he has 10. Now the guy gets two, he gets two more, and he has four, right? Last dude only has one. He buries it in the ground. And when he comes back, <clears throat> the, the, the first guy that has went five to 10 is said, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into joy today. Now he says the exact same thing to the dude with two. Like you normally go, see, most of us, we think if that dude did more with his things, oh, man, you are, you're rocking better than the guy that had two and made four. Yeah, you're awesome, dude. No, he says, Jesus says the exact same thing. Do what you have with what you have. Do something with it, right? And so the guy who has two, he makes four. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into joy today. 
And then the last dude, he goes, he goes, why didn't you do what you why'd you bury it in the ground? He's like, Master, I know that you're hard, dude. You don't like people. You beat me up. He goes, why didn't you at least put it in the bank so it could earn interest? What he meant is give it to the church or in that time frame, the 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 temple. You don't have a bank. They would have they would give their money if they had a significant amount of money. And I'll explain the amount of money here in half a sec. They would give that significant amount of money, not in their pockets, but they would they would deposit it with the temple. It was basically the first bank out there. So it could earn interest. I thought, ooh, wow. Now he goes, you wicked servant. You knew I was a hard guy. You didn't really listen to me. Smack, smack. I'm going to take that talent and give it to the guy with 10. Because, you know, he has more ability to do it anyway. And they, by the way, they get to keep all their talents. The 10 gets to keep his talent. Now he has 11. And the other guy has 4. He gets to keep it. The one guy, he goes to outer darkness. Oh, wait a second. Outer darkness is a clue. That's a goat. How much is a talent? A talent is 6,000 days of a man's wage, which was called the drachma. Okay? When you do 6,000 days of a man's wage, and this is an old calculation I did. I, I don't, I mean, I could, could do a new calculation that some people would say, but this was several years ago. I did the calculation off of an average American salary on a year. Okay, because it's 6,000 days of a man's salary. When you do that, that math, 365 days a year, right? It is $1.2 million. The first dude has 13, he, he gets 13 million bucks, or sorry, 12 million bucks. It's 5.6 million. The next guy has 2.4 and makes 4.8. He's not, God's not talking little tiny numbers. But again, we have that concept of the unfaithful servant, the foolish virgins. Both of them go to outer darkness. Gives you a clue. Oop, sorry. Click on the wrong side. Here's a good one. Uh, John, and I got to take a second to kind of pull this up here. So John 15 this is like the vine and the branches, okay? So you are the vine. I am, I, I, I'm, you know, you are the vine, that's Jesus. We are the branches, okay? And so that we are connected inside of him. But in verse seven, if you remain in me and my words, my words, the oil, remain in you, ask whatever you want and it'll be done for you. Now, the verse 6, sorry, before, I, I should have said verse 6, sorry, 6 and 7. If anyone does not remain in me, he's thrown aside like a branch and withers. They gather them, <coughs> they throw them in the fire, and they're burnt. By the way, what is the final ending of every single wicked person in the history of of the planet. The final ending is the lake of fire. The lake of fire. Dudes, do you catch that? Is that not amazing? Jesus uses these gorgeous analogies and if you just spend a little time in there, you will get something you've never even seen before. Now, there's also a portion that we're going to catch here in a little bit. These are all somewhat connected to the bride of Christ. The goats are believers. But you hang with that one for half a second. They had a new vial or uh, a lamp. They had, they were connected to the vine. But they drained out the oil and they didn't remain in the word, which is the oil, right? Guys, there's a connection. 
Luke 12, 46. Here's another one. Uh, I gotta take a second. Luke 12, 46. Bloop, bloop. Oh, there we go. Um, that slave's master will come on a day that he does not expect him at an hour he does not know. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place of unbelievers. What that's talking about, and it goes and it goes several several different areas, but basically that's part of the gnashing of teeth. He, these people, and he's going now. When you read um, Luke twelve, it's talking about people that are or will be or were inside of Jesus or believers in Christ. Luke thirteen twenty two. Let's do that. Bing, ding, ding, ding. Um, well, 13 to 20. So this is talking about the narrow way. So it says, you know, that, that no one can go through the wide area. You have to go through the narrow area. The whole point of that is, is that there is a door and that you're shut inside. You're shut out of it. Even the Lord says, open up. I don't know where you are. And where are you coming from? He goes, I don't know where you're coming. And, and you've been drunk in the streets. It goes on and says there's weeping and gnashing of teeth in that place. They will come from all over the place. Some are the last who will be first, and some are the first who will be last. That's a heavenly kind of promise. But holy cow, guys, the narrow way is talking about the word. It's not talking about anything else. That's the word. In uh, Acts twelve, or sorry, Acts four twelve, there's only name, only one name under heaven by which we may be saved. Sorry, I'm sorry if that bothers you, but that's what the word says to us. And the prodigal son. Now, let's talk about that one. It's really kind of cool. So we got this one son, and he's like. And he's trying to live it up. And we have the dutiful son. I'll explain that one in just a second. But we have the, 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 the one son, and he goes, hey, dad, give me my inheritance. He goes, well, you have the right to it. And he goes, I really wish you wouldn't go, but here's your money. So the, the, the unfaithful son, in essence, the prodigal son, goes, spends all of his money. Then he comes back. And after he's like destitute, he comes back and he says, can I just be a slave in your, in your, the, the father's house here? Can I just be like going on the service and I'll just eat with the pigs? I mean, cause I, at least I'll have food to eat right now. The father, so this is all about the father. It's not about Jesus here. Okay. There's Jesus is not even involved in this particular parable. It's all about the father has a communication with that son who comes back and he says, put on the best robe, give him a ring, let him have shoes on his feet. And we're going to do a feast. It's called the feast of the kingdom that will happen in the beginning part of this. That particular product, I mean, the Luke and the Matthew one have different ways of saying it, but they're basically the same concept that the prodigal son is the sheep. How cool is that? That's the sheep. They go away. They're like the one of the lost. There's a hundred sheep. One is lost and the father goes and gets him. So their relationship is really with the father and they're destitute. But guess who the other guy is? We have the dutiful son and he says so many cool ways. He goes, how come you didn't make a, a I was here and I was doing the work. He's like, you can be a part of this thing. Come on. There's plenty of, of, of calf in there. We'll have a big old nasty feast. He's like, no, you wouldn't give me a goat to have a feast with my friends. That is what it says. The dutiful son is connecting himself and he doesn't go into the feast of the kingdom because the sheep and the goats are separated and the goats have to go into outer darkness. Oh my gosh. It, when I first saw that, and it was only about 
few years ago, like five, seven years ago, something like that. I was freaking because it's so cool. Okay. I know I spent a lot of time just because I'm totally loving this part. Okay. Let's talk about the nature of the bride and versus the goat. Okay. The bride has a desire for Jesus to have complete intimacy with his creation. That is the desire of Jesus. He wants that in you, and you need to have that for him because you have a love for the scripture with that too. There's also a beautiful story, and you've you heard me maybe say it, but the story of the shoemaker is that even when <coughs> the, the groom is off preparing the house for you, that's, that's John 14. He goes, I, I go and prepare a house for you. Hold on, because I'll be back and get you. That is talking about the millennial reign. He's gone and he's going to come back and take you away to that to that house, which is the, in the millennial reign. But he takes you out, which is a harpezo or a rapture event. Okay? Now, in that same circumstance, when we have that, the shoemaker, has actually, <coughs> Jesus, the, 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 the son, goes and says, hey, shoemaker, come over here. Go make the bride and the wedding party, all shoes. Now, where do you get shoes as an idea? Well, we have Ephesians 6, 12 through 18. The feet of the gospel is that peaceful part. It's bringing her peace. Man. There is a <clears throat> vision that I put in foretold book two that when i and i got this vision that when these um the, this is about the called <clears throat> but when they come into heaven they get a wedding a gown they get a gown that is made and you got to read it it is such an amazing story but it's also about the shoes and by the way you know i hear this all the time women go you know the, it's all about the shoes right you know, and, and having a great outfit. Okay, well, that's where that comes from. Okay, some of that. <clears throat> the bride is about the completion of his work on the cross, the first coming. Sex is a connection that the husband and wife have together in such a powerful way. When you have sex before marriage, it's a bonding that is is messing you up. And every time you have sex with another person, I'm not trying to put this bad on you, okay? But when you have that, is that it's a bond that's messing you up because it's supposed to be this bond that keeps you together. That's the same thing that Jesus talks about and, and the Father talks about Old and New Testament. Like, we were married to you, but you wanted a divorce. This is why the... the um, the remnant have to go through the tribulation because they didn't want to be married. <clears throat> Jesus goes, I'm going to marry someone else then. I hate to tell you that. Okay. But the goats, now remember the sex part, okay? The goats are a devious animal with a bad mood and they will eat anything. You remember me talking about this in the sheep. Now, goats, again, I mean, I'm not talking baby goats. We're talking about adults. They are not the most fun things to be around. If you haven't been around them, you haven't seen it. But they will eat anything. And so what happens, why do we get the concept of eating? How do you grow in the Lord? You get off the milk and eat the meat. It's what you take into your mouth, which is, he says, uh, you know, Jesus is in the desert, right? And he's he's super hungry because he's been there for 40 days. He goes, you know, just make that rock into bread. And he goes, I don't, I don't need that. I don't live on the bread alone. The bread is the word of God. So what should you be eating? You should be eating the word. But see, the goat eats the most gross things that will eat anything. Goat teachers, you're going to see this, eat so much cruddy stuff that you can't imagine that is not of the word. And I see this all the time. God chose this animal to represent a portion of the church. These are people that walked away 
from the gospel. These are evangel. These are not just people that just kind of wandered away. Now, some people think. I'll take this off the screen again. <clears throat> some people think that that um, you can lose your salvation. Like, oop, where's my phone? Like that kind of losing. No, 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 no. It never says that. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. If nothing can separate you from the love of God, what's the one thing that can? You. You have every ability for you have, I mean, you have every ability to walk away. And that's what the goats do. They walk away from scripture. I'm going to give you an example of this, okay? I'm setting up this room when I first moved into this house. So I can, I got these two whiteboards that are over here, like 45 bucks at Mardell's, right? Two of them, I had to like get them set up and I got this guy to put him on the wall because I suck at doing that, right? I'd miss every stud if I had, if, if I don't care how many stud finders I find, I'd, I'd hit, it, hit it in between those. Okay, so I get this guy, puts him up on the wall, and I'm starting to play around with the very first um, uh, timeline. Now, the timeline that we have for the, the tribulation series is here, but I was working on the first timeline, which is called Hope in the Last Days. You can get it on drscottyoung.com. So I was working on this in 2017. I don't remember the, the year. And I'm playing around with this, but I'm listening to something on YouTube. So I had this TV over here and I'm kind of watching you. I'm listening to YouTube in the background. And so it's a, it, I don't really want to get into this, this culty kind of semi-Christian kind of thing. And basically, he goes along fine, and he's talking, you know, about Jesus, and he's talking about the Word, and he's going just perfectly. And then somewhere or another, he like goes off the train. It's like you're on a train from from Denver to Chicago. Maybe let's say it's, let's just for, for the heck of it say it's a straight shot, right? And you go, boop, you were gonna go right there, and then suddenly we're off to we're off to Philadelphia, and I, and I'm like, okay, I don't understand. Where did the train go to? Like, I can't figure it out. So I'm backing it up, and I back up and listen, back up and listen and listen. I can't figure it out. This guy was on the train, and just like you saw trains in 2023, you know, that they were derailed, this is a complete derailing. I mean, he makes logic leaps that don't make any sense. And then he's like totally off into his crazy land of, of Jesus. False teacher. Oh, when you guys catch it. This is what false teachers do. They just go off into nutty lands. And we have people that are pushing the 777 books of the Bible. That's another type of false teaching. We have people who teach that not of the word. And when you push them on the word, they go, well, it's been corrupted. Like, I can prove the word over and over again, but they don't want to hear that. And they call themselves Christians. And unfortunately, we see that in the truth or movement. There's a lot of people, they're claiming God, but they're not really, they, they're not really part of it. They're not, they're a false teacher in so many different ways. Okay. Now, the scary goats. We're going to get deeper into them. How come Satanists love to use the goat? It's because it's the perfect picture. And I'll connect what happens through the tribulation in a little bit. Let's do some of these, right? In Matthew 22, remember I told you about <coughs> the wedding feast? So in Matthew 22, 1 through 13, we have the father and, father, and he's it's after the wedding ceremony, so it has nothing to do with the bride and has nothing to do, do with the groom. you got to read it. There has not been one pastor who's taken that from, from top to bottom. Never heard anyone do it. I've seen it a hundred times. And they skip over the passage or they just pull out pieces. And you have to take it as a full story. Because, like, I can't rip apart Jesus' story. Jesus is making a story. And so we should listen to the whole thing and find where to place that. It is the wedding feast because that's all what it's talking about. But in Matthew 22, <coughs> 22, 5. But, and he's talking about different groups of people. And by the way, there's the chosen in there. There's the called in there. There are angels, messenger angels. 
And there's one other interesting group. There's another one that said in verse five, but they paid no attention. This is when they're trying to bring them in, in for the wedding feast. And they went away, one to his farm and the other to the others. And they seized, the, the others seized the slaves, treated them outrageously and killed them. The king was out, was enraged. And he, which is the father, and he sent troops, destroyed the murderers and burned down the town. Verse 12, so he said to the friend, said to him, friend, how did you get in here? Now there's an, there's another one. So that's one, but here's another one. So there's a guy that tries to come into the wedding. It means that he's a part of the body in some kind of a tertiary way. And he says, calls him friend. He doesn't call him beloved. Very different. Friend, how did you get in here with, without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. Then he t t told the king, I mean, told the attendants, which is the messenger angels, tie him up, hand and foot, throw him out into outer darkness, where there'll be weeping and gnashing teeth. Every time we get goats, we get weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, here's what I want you to catch here in just a second. The goats, and I'm going to show you this over and over again, but the goats, it says they come in without wedding clothes. Do you know, it's not like, it's not like going to a church service or, you know, a wedding and you come in with like holy jeans and, you know, kind of, I mean, I'm not talking about like an outside wedding. I'm talking about a really formal wedding. The wedding of the groom and the bride is the wedding to beat the wedding. Think about all the royal weddings you've ever heard of, like Princess Di when she, she got married. I mean, like everyone's dressed to the hilt, right? That's the kind of wedding. You would dress to the top you could possibly be. And yet he comes, he says, why did you come in here without wedding clothes? He's saying your wedding dress. So guess what that friend did? He walks in naked. Who could have wedding clothes? Only the bride. She comes in without this wedding clothes because what it tells you in Revelation, I want to say it's <clears throat> 21, but I could be wrong. It could be 19 to 21 in that range. But basically it says the bride has prepared herself and made herself ready, putting on the wedding clothes. And how do you make yourself ready? It's just getting in the word and trusting in Jesus. Simple as that. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to be better. Sorry, it's my foot. Um, you don't have to be better. You don't have to do anything. That's what your job is. But these ones just want to walk around naked in, in a really not good way. It's going to make sense. <clears throat> Their destiny is outer darkness. Now, I know there's a book, and I'm blanking out the name, that's probably good because I don't want to try to totally beat up this guy. And he writes this book about different things. And he talks about outer darkness. And some people have said this. Like outer darkness is, is a place where kind of bad Christians stay there for a while and they kind of get better with God. That is not what the word says. In outer darkness is a place that is like unlike any other place out there. And it has weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you think that if you're sort of a bad Christian, you haven't really done a great job, you'd have weeping and gnashing of teeth? That means punishment. Yeah, punishment. The goats. Now, normal people who become, you know, don't believe in Jesus. They go to hell and they stay in hell up until the white throne judgment. At the white throne judgment, he says, I'm looking at the book and your name's not here. And it's the book of life. And he goes, basically goes, hmm, I'm looking, your name's not here. You're dead. And the guy looks down at himself. He's been resurrected, but he's not resurrected with the pretty body you're going to get. He looks down and he goes, Ugh. this is the flesh that I chose. I chose in that way as the, as the wicked person. I chose it <clears throat> and I walk in before the king and he goes, you're dead. And he goes, well, yeah, you're right. And then that person goes directly to the lake of fire. Goats might have existed all the way through time. Like, 
<coughs> excuse me, the um, one type of goats, and I mean, Jesus is, pulls no punches. And I'm talking about like knockout blow to punches. Your whitewashed tombs. Who did he say that about? <sighs> Pharisees, religious leaders who really didn't care about the word. They're whitewashed tombs. And I mean, he is so mean to them in different ways. Well, you know what? They walked away. He knows exactly what they did. They asked for a divorce. The story of the Judas goat. Now, there's a, a, a real interesting story. They actually have a thing called a Judas goat. And that, will, that goat will lead the lambs to the slaughterhouse. Now, because he'll have the smell of death on him, he can only be used once, and then he's out to pasture or whatever. <clears throat> Sometimes they sacrifice him, or, you know, I mean, they, they eat him. But the Judas goat is, and you go, well, Judas, like Judas Iscariot. That's where we get this from. They're traitors. <clears throat> False teachers are spiritually psychotic. Oh, my goodness, this is my... One of my favorite parts. So we're going to pull it off, off of this. False teachers are spiritually psychotic. <clears throat> so I'm going to pull this off. We have Jude. Sorry, pull it off here. Jude 18, 18 and 19. <clears throat> it's only one chapter, guys. So you don't have to realize, like, which chapter? Okay. 18. <clears throat> they told you in the end time... There will be scoffers walking according to their ungodly desires. These people create divisions and are unbelievers not having the spirit. Now, I personally have seen that preached many times. But uh, about five or seven years ago, again, the same kind of time frame, maybe a little earlier than that, I started to play around with these words in the Greek. <clears throat> and it says, in the end times, so we're talking about end times. And it uses the word scoffer. Sorry, let me pull on that word here a second. And I don't want to say it. It's, it's called a derider. And the other one, mocker, scoffer. So it dip, depends on the version. A false teacher. Now, when you see false teachers, now you see college professors who really teach in this gross stuff that they teach. They love to mock anyone else who doesn't believe in, in their viewpoint. False teachers hate anyone else that teaches anything else but their truth. Now we see this in the woke movement, but we're also, we also see it in the body of Christ. He goes further with this. These people create divisions. What is he talking about? Jude is telling you this. <clears throat> Catch this. He's telling these people create divisions or unbeliever. Well, divisions in where? In the body, in the church. Now, let me tell you a five-second story, okay? There was a, a place in Tulsa at the time called Open Bible, and we used to lead, it was in Jinx, Oklahoma, and um, <clears throat> this is back in the 90s. The Holy Spirit was really moving. And this is when I, I first met Daryl Green. I mean, uh, Daryl Evans, excuse me. Um, and Daryl Evans is a really amazing worship leader, right? And um, <clears throat> so we were worshiping, and then the pastor gets up there, and he starts talking. And a dude, I mean, we had gotten there really late, right? And so we're like at the bottom, back. Dude walks over, opens the door, right in the middle of it. He goes, you people call yourself Christians, blah, blah. And he's... He's screaming at him, I can't get to the ATM. You guys never let me into the ATM. No, first off, he's totally nuts. And I mean, the, the ushers are trying to like calm him down and the pastor is like white. She is, a, I mean, what does he say to that? He goes, I'm sorry, sir, I'm sorry. And from that point on, they put like little cones around the ATM and let people get in there so they didn't have this, this idiot disruptor. <clears throat> the guy isn't a believer, most likely. Did he really cause a division in the church? No, because he's outside of the church. How do you cause a division? You have to be inside of the church. So they create divisions. And it uses the word unbeliever. Now, believer or believe is the word 
pisteo, P-I-S-T-E-O. It has a, it has something to do with faith. Faith is pistis. Belief is pisteo. These are like similar words. They have, they have interaction with one another. They have coalition. <clears throat> but it doesn't use that word. So if I was using this, I would have said, you know, a, you know, uh, a, a, a pisteo. A means not, okay, or like atheist, a theist. It would be like a pisteo. And there's other examples of a pisteo all over the word, but not here. It has this word called CK Kos. P S Y C H I K O S. And I'm like going, I don't get it. I don't know where this word is. I've never seen it before. It means <clears throat> um, animate. I mean, this animate point, it means lower essential nature, the bestial nature. And I'm going, okay, so we got someone who's sexual. Okay, so that's. Okay, well, that pretty is consistent with a lot of false teachers because this is talking about false teachers. They have a sexual appetite. By the way, the number one thing that, that happens to pastors is they fall into sexual sin. That's how Satan wants to do it. Teachers, including me, have to fight that area. You want to pray for me? That's the area to pray for me. I've never fallen into it, but I will not do it because I work so hard to do it. But it doesn't mean I don't feel that temptation. Every teacher does. But when you move into false teaching, you open yourself up to that sexual side of this. But that didn't fix it for me. Because I'm like going, CK Coase. So I meet with a, um, a, a theology professor and I'm like, dude, I don't get it. I mean, CK Coast doesn't make any sense. When I looked it up, it actually, if you look at it in the Greek and then you try to see a little bit of some of the generations, Aristotle takes that word and uses it part of psychosis. Now, a person who has psychosis, they, someone who can have psychosis could have it because like sleep deprivation will create a temporary psychosis. In the 60s, they used to do these deprivation studies, Ear, hearing deprivation studies. It's called auditory deprivation. They did sleep deprivation and all these different deprivation studies. And what they found is if you could keep a person awake, you would create a normal, I mean, normal, non-mentally impaired person into psychotic. What that means is it doesn't mean multiple personalities. It means that they don't perceive reality anymore. And trust me, as an audiologist, I see patients all the time who are psychotic. And like they come in and they swear that I'm the cardiologist instead of the audiologist. And I mean, they swear up and down. And we're not just talking about confusion. They swear that I was there or I've been in their room. And I'm like, no, I've never been there. I've never seen you before, you know. And like family members are all embarrassed. This is just happens, unfortunately. Sometimes drug psychosis that happens, right? And when you have real psychotics, they're, they're real interesting situations with that. So I'm going, okay, Aristotle's talking about CK Kos and he's throwing under the psychosis area. And so I meet with this professor. I'm like, okay, false teachers. You get the false teacher of a scoffer. He goes, yeah, I got that one. And I said, they create divisions because they're inside the church. He goes, yep, I get that one. I, I get you there. And it says, are unbelievers, CK Kos, not having the spirit? And I'm like, not having the spirit, not having the spirit. What is that? And what it means is that they drained out the spirit in them, which is the oil in their lamp. And I guess what it does? It creates a spirit psychosis. These people like cannot from a biblical, they can sound wonderful if you listen to them and you didn't know the word. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. Now, I'm talking about wisdom. Some people actually Im improperly um, speak that, that, that phrase, a biblical phrase. My people perish from a lack of knowledge. 
Knowledge of what? The word. They perish because these people will destroy the believers. They exist today. That's why I'm so on this topic. These are spiritually psychotic people. And they literally don't make any sense anymore. And I've watched too many people I respect, too many people I never respected. And I watch them and you're just like, that is not the word. Now, so I've talked to people and they're, and they're not on the word and they, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, blah, 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 blah. and they're, oh, okay, well. And then they want to learn. They're going, well, tell me why I'm missing it. Hey man, I love those people. I'll sit with them for hours. I mean, I'll have people on that phone for hours or in person. But I don't give a minute to those, the goats, these false teachers, because they don't want to learn anything. <clears throat> and let's go and see how these actually work. So they're actually existed today. Now, by the way, the sheep sort of, sort of exist, but not really. See, the remnant isn't here. The sheep aren't here. They'll only kind of separate themselves in the tribulation. The called are not here. They'll separate themselves in the tribulation. The chosen, the 144,000, they're not here. They separate themselves in the tribulation. But there's two groups, the bride and the goats. Both exist today. And so let me tell you, let me back up here and let me tell you one thing. <clears throat> the goats have a top to them. Revelation 13, 1, we hear about the false, I mean, sorry, the, the Antichrist, this is a man, and he gets the first beast in him and he comes out of the sand of the seashore. So out of the sand, so out of obscurity, that's the Antichrist. And the next one is called the false prophet. That's the head of the false teachers. That's why many people believe, including me, believe that that guy is a religious figure. The Antichrist is not. He's a political figure. Now, he'll take on Godhood later on, but he's a political figure. <clears throat> and he might have some you know, uh, deceptive points. And obviously he has deceptive points, but the real deceiver is the false prophet that no one pays any attention to. And he sets up the image of the beast, which, and he also sets up the mark of the beast. The antichrist doesn't do the mark of the beast. False prophet does the mark of the beast. False prophet does it. And here's the interesting thing. These false, the false prophet is going to lead all of the goats together to create a severe deception. We're not in that time frame yet. It, we have types and shadows of it today, but we're not in that time frame. Okay, you saw this one before. I'm going to walk this through again. We have the child of God. So you're a child when you first come to Christ. You come to the Father through the blood of Jesus. You remember this one? <clears throat> then you move forward and you grow because you don't eat, just drink the milk. But you get more and more and deeper into it and you have comfort from him. So there's a lot of milk drinking in the first part, right? And as you grow into that situation you become part of the church or the bride, okay? But before we do, sorry, I said they're not part of the bride. You come, come into the church, but you're still kind of a child, okay? You don't know a lot. Now, there's two ways that go. You can either go down to this next phase, which I'll explain in a second, or you go to the next one. The, the purple phase is that you become betrothed, you realize, you grow up, and you go, you know what? I want to be the bride of Christ. And I see a lot of people do this, and they, they still mess up the words. Well, I'm the remnant. I'm the child. You're the bride. 
Jesus isn't coming back for a little child. Hate to tell you, but that's like pedophilia. That's not what he's for. He's coming back for an adult woman, which you are in the spirit. Okay? <clears throat> now, you, he does it, and he tells you these promises. Faith is the things, substance of things hoped for and the promise of things unseen. Those promises are about him. Your betrothal for promises to Jesus as the groom. And you become the bride or the co-inheritance. And your children, meaning Jesus and our children, because, you know, when you have a bride and a groom, they're supposed to have kids. Who are their spiritual kids? The first spiritual kids are the sheep in the millennial reign and the remnant in the millennial reign. So you can grow or you could exit out of this situation in this phase here and become a goat. You never really get through this betrothal process here. You're faking it. That's why we have these people who, who come into the church and they, they, they do all these crazy messages. <clears throat> Sorry, um, pull this off the screen. They do those, these crazy messages and they sound like they're Christians. They sound like they're the bride. They get you, they tickle itching ears. And yet you get more interested in them as relating to the gospel. And, and, and instead of relating to the gospel, you get more into the person. And you normally, here's what happens. I see people and they go, yeah, but I like him. We see this in the truth or move it too. I really like him. Don't like Scott, like the word that I'm trying to share with you. I don't care if you like me. I'm loved of Christ. I care that you like the word that I'm talking about. So you can like me, it's cool. But don't love me. Love Jesus. Love the word. Don't love me. That's opposite of false teachers. Goats. Love me. Don't focus on the word. And these are people that go off into nutty land. I mean, totally nutty. And when you see where they there are, they, they're often doing a new religion in many ways. And you're going, how does this happen? You know... We see this, I can see this in every church out there. There are circumstances of people who just go away from the gospel. There's a, there's a church in Tulsa called the Higher Dimensions. And when they were around, they had a great pastor. I don't even want to say his name because I don't want you to Google him. And I mean, that guy was really in the word. He gets married to a woman around that same time frame. I don't know if it was because of her or not. I don't know because I wasn't in the room. But somewhere he starts getting off the gospel and then he would go farther and farther and he didn't even believe that Jesus died for our sins. And he just went to that whole crazy ecumenical, you know, ecumenical issues of, of nuttiness. Now, I'm not saying just that only, but he just, they, they don't believe in the blood of Christ in the way that, that you would do that saves them. It's about what they say and not what the word says. And so when you try to not talk to them, they will get all freaky. And I'm not talking about like woke people who can't really defend it. These people, they can defend a lot of it and they can sound really amazing, but they don't go back to the word. I wash myself in the word all the time. I'm doing it right now. So I'm, I'm praying it over myself as I'm Praying the word over you. Wash yourself in the word. Oh, and feel it. But the goats are the scary group that you'll see. I hope that helped you out. If you want to know more, I'm going to grab one. It's called The Wedding of Jesus. This talks about the bride and it talks about the sheep, but the goats are in here as well. So that'll give you a couple things to kind of look at. You can kind of see them at drscottyoung.com. 
By the way, I don't sell anything. I don't try to sell anything. You want to donate, that's great. But that's anyone who's doing that is a faker. Okay? They're a, a goat or a false, a false prophet in essence. Okay? Don't listen to that. If you want to know who I am, it, I tell you all about it on the website. Thanks so much.